After Rutherford's model, we'll be discussing Bohr's atomic model. Actually, Rutherford's model had some drawbacks due to which it was not fully implemented. Many of its positive sides were there, but due to the few negative, uh, that is the drawbacks, that is about the stability of the atom and the atomic spectra, which he could not explain, there was a need for a new model. So, Bohr was a scientist. What he did, actually he did not carry out any experiment or such. Rutherford's work was very appreciative and so he just took his work, means concluded his work, some postulates from his work and only took out its defect like applying the electromagnetic theory. Okay? And in this way compiling the physics laws, some physics laws and uh, Rutherford's model, he made this four atomic model. Okay, so scientist's name was Neil Bohr. He carried out this work in 1913. Postulates given by Neil Bohr. What postulates he gave? He appreciated Rutherford's work that electrons revolve around the nucleus, that is the positively charged center. But he showed that they revolve but in a permissible orbit. That is not revolve randomly, they revolve in a permissible orbit. So his first postulate was electrons revolve around the nucleus in fixed paths which have definite energy and are called as permissible orbits permissible orbits energy shells stationary states or energy levels he gave the orbits the name energy shell or energy level because according to him he said that the electron is not that which possesses energy, it is the path, the path in which it is revolving possesses the energy. That is, the orbits have their energies. Okay. So, the next point he concluded that the orbits have their own energy. Electron has that energy until it remains in that it, it means that each orbit will have its definite energy and that energy will be of that of the orbit as soon as the electron leaves that orbit it will not have the energy not possess that energy as it was possessing earlier when it was in that orbit okay. so for this we can take a diagrammatic view this is the nucleus it is surrounded by the orbits where the electrons revolve. Now, these are different energy levels also. They can be called, they can be called shells also and they can be called stationary state also. These are designated by some letters. Now, the energy shells are designated by letters. That is the nearest shell to the nucleus is designated as K, then followed by L, M and N. In this way, they are designated by the alphabets. That is K, L, M, N. And furthermore, as the shell increases. Now, the K is the innermost shell and it is also represented by N that is equal to 1. 1 means the innermost shell. Okay. So, K is representing 
the shell number 1. Okay. Here n is the principal quantum number. n is the principal quantum number. It shows the number of shell in which an electron is staying. Actually there are 4 quantum numbers but uh, that is to be dealt later. Only initially we should know that n is the principal quantum number which shows the number of the shell in which shell an electron is residing. k is 1, n is equal to 1 for k, then n is equal to 2 for l and n is equal to 3 for m and n is equal to 4 for n. This is the way in which you can represent the shells, number the shell. This model was more acceptable because it was according to the atomic spectra also and it also very well explains the stability of the atom. Okay. He told that the electron does not have its energy, only the paths have. As soon as the electrons leave the path, it will no more have that energy. Now the third point what he said, the electron, the electron can move from one shell to another either by absorbing energy or by emitting energy. The electron can change or move from one shell to another. If it moves from a lower shell to a higher shell then it will always absorb energy. Okay, And when it moves from higher shell to a lower shell then it will emit energy. For example if I say the energies for N1 shell is E1, N2 shell is equal to E2 and N3 shell is equal to then E3 is the shell which has more energy than E2 and E1. So we can make an relation that E3 that is energy of the third shell is greater than energy of the second shell which is greater than the energy of the first shell. Okay. Now when an electron will move from the higher shell to lower shell that is if an electron moves from if electron moves from E3 shell to E2 shell that is E3 to E2 then it will radiate energy okay it is it will emit energy because E2 is, is having less energy and E3 is having more energy so when it will go to the E2 then it will take the level, only that much energy which much is required in E2 okay so when it goes from a, uh, E3 to E2 that is from higher level to lower energy level then it will emit energy. If it moves from E1 to E3 then it will absorb energy. So in this way we can see that electron when it moves from one shell to another shell it will either emit energy or it will absorb. This was the important postulate of Bohr. Now the next thing what he told was about the amount of energy emitted or absorbed. He said that the amount of energy absorbed or emitted is given by the difference between the two energy levels. So how he represented this that what is when electron moves from energy level E2 to E3. Then it is given as energy absorbed is the amount of energy that is E3 minus E2 that is represented by delta E. Okay. And energy emitted is given by E3 to E2. That is when it moves from higher shell to lower shell then it will emit energy that will be given by delta E that is equal to E2 minus okay. Here we will get the energy in negative sign. Negative means it will be as E3 is greater than E2 so delta E will be negative. It shows that energy is emitted. Okay. So here energy will be emitted and uh, hence that is why there will be negative sign as E3 is greater than E2 and uh, in case of emission always the energy shown is releasing then it is minus. We also know that E is equal to H nu. Okay. So here we can 
keep up both the cases h mu and h mu now here h is equal to planck's constant and its value is about uh, 6.62 into 10 to the power minus 34 joules and mu is the frequency frequency of the radiation so by this Bohr concluded how the energy is definite and how the electron does not merge with the nucleus okay Bohr's model is very much in line with the Rutherford's model only difference is he was Rutherford was not able to explain why the electron when it will move randomly then it will move come and collapse with the nucleus okay here what he uh, Bohr did he made he told that the orbits have the fixed energy and that is the reason why electron does not move uh, on revolving does not go and collapse with the nucleus so this was about the Bohr's model this is widely accepted it laid foundation for modern atomic theory